Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. We are going to continue our session related to data processing fundamentals with live coding in Python. And in this video specifically, we are going to cover how to refactor an existing Python code and add the class architecture or the class format to it. We start our content by looking at the both main.py and the dataset.py which we have created in the earlier sessions. Next, we talk about two different classes. One is the dataset selector and its job to make sure load the particular dataset from a particular Python library. Here we are covering both Seaborn as well as the scikit-learn dataset for us and dataset selector job is to load the dataset from any of given Python library and return as a data frame. Next, we create the another class named dataset manager and its job is to keep the data frame as its internal property and apply various functions on this given data frame while updating the internal state of the data frame as stored inside the dataset manager. After the concepts, we create our very first class, the dataset selector, and learn the various internal method definitions, code initialization, and everything related to the class creation. Then we add few methods to our existing class. And next step, we actually instantiate the object from our dataset selector class and use those methods to read a particular data set from a particular python library and load it once the data set is available now it's time for us to create the data set manager class we learn to add various internal properties setting up a data frame as internal property and add various methods to it and at last we actually combine both data set selector as well as the data set manager class to read various data sets from Seaborn as well as the scikit-learn library and apply various methods to them in our application. So I think that's good enough introduction for us. So let's get ourselves coding. So this is the code which we left off in the previous tutorial. This code is working without any issue. And as we just discussed, we are going to add the class architecture to this application going forward. So right now this code is divided into two files, main.py and dataset.py. So first thing what we will do is that we will copy these two files and we will save them as it is. So I will just create a two files. So if we look into our main.py at this place where we are getting the data set and when we take this data set, we actually filter the data set by value or category. So we need to build the data set selector class. So I will be adding class data set data set selector. So you need to define the class and initially when we do not have a lot more information about what our class is going to do just pass the object so we are defining a class name data set selector and we are passing the object okay and whenever you have a class it's always good to set an initializer to it so we are going to set up an initializer which is a init so you see here we have init and if we want to pass other parameters we can pass other parameters i'm just coming over there and by default we will keep a class name so we can say this is a data set selector description so we can add the description here we can say the requirement for this selector is that it's using a python library to load the data set which is embedded into that library now we can say which library we are going to support here so we could say self dot ds libraries we could say that we are already supporting sns we are also supporting for example pandas we can also support the library called scikit learn and if somebody would want to name them a little differently so we could say that okay because the sns is also be named as originally seaborn pandas is pandas scikit learn people also call as sklearn so these are the sub name but these are the libraries supported 
Now, this data set selector, remember when we try to load this data set, we always provide the which data set name and from which library you need to select because now we have multiple of library choices. So we can say self dot data set name is equal to, we need to pass that data set name. So we could say that when the class is going to be initialized, you need to pass a data set name. So we call it data set name you need to pass and that name will be added immediate to the class initializer. It means when this class is going to initialize, it's going to have that data set name, okay? And at the same time, it's also good that we can also ask the user to give us the library. So because library is the first will be selected. So the order I have written in a way that first you give the library name and then you give a data set which is available in that library. So let's call it self dot ds library is equal to ds library. It means when this class is going to be initialized very quickly, these three parameters which are default will be set and then these two parameters are going to be given during the class initialization. Limit I am not using here. There is a reason for it. I will be coming a little later. So this is the class initializer. This time this class is doing nothing, just initialized only. At this point, because this is a data set selector, so we need to figure it out that at least one method where we could say get data set. Fine, get data set. So this is a method which is part of this class. This method can only be accessed through this class instantiated object. And in that method, what we really want is that we just want to make sure that if the library name which is provided and the data set which is provided are these two part of our specification, what we, our class can do. Now you see here, because these two parameters are set, we don't need to call them by parameter. We can call them the class initialized parameter. So these are initialized. So you can say self dot the DS library name. Okay then you need to really make sure that this library is part of this library. So very simple check in self.ds libraries. It means if somebody call a name XYZ, if this is not part of these libraries, nothing can be done. So that must be true. If this condition must be true, okay? Now you need to make sure that if that is true, then the data set which you are going to select must be the part of that library. So initially we are only supporting SNS and Seaborn. So I'm gonna put this thing here, comment, and I will comment it. It means these two are supported right now. Next, we need to make sure that the data set which we are going to select is part of the given library. So what we will do, we will write that method to define, validate data set in libraries at this point and we are not passing the parameters here because the both parameters the data set and the library they both are already available as the class initialized parameter so now we can say if self dot ds library in if it is in sns or the seaborn then we need to check if the per this particular ds name is part of sns library if self dot ds name in now we need the sns library remember we already have here is the method which we select if the data set is part of sns library we already have sns here so sns dot get data set names so if given data set name is part of data set name it means this is return true else if for example if we have the similar set for scikit-learn and sklearn for example, so we also support the scikit-learn and sklearn. If we have that, we could implement that, but right now we do not have. So we could say return false overall, return false. This we are going to, to do. We could say if self. So now we need to validate. So if validate data set in libraries is true. Now we need to load the data set. So now we could say if self dot ds library in sns library right now so this is the sns library then we need to load data set from sns similar to that else if if this library is here we are going to load data set too 
So that's where the data set is going to be loaded. So it means that we need to create two more methods here. So let's write method, it's called define load data set from Seaborn. And here we will create an empty data frame. So we just call it data frame equal to pandas, imported pandas. So let's import pandas as pd. So we could say pd dot data frame. It creates an empty data frame. For example, we can say sns dot load data set and we can say self dot ds name. This will load the data set. But what if there is an error? What if there are other complications in our code? So it's always good to use the try and catch. Try to load this data set and we will store that data set in this variable except this line will run. Whatever the data set will be loaded by this name will be stored into this data frame. If not, error data set and here format self dot ds name. Here we are going to return the data frame. So in both scenario, this code is going to be work good way because empty data set will be returned even if there is an error and we can check there is an empty method available in the data frame panda which checks if the data frame is empty or not. So this is much more cleaner way to do it. So this method is going to be called. So it means that this data frame is going to be returned here just example df is equal to self dot load data set from seaborn similar to that from scikit-learn to do add code here just return an empty data frame for now so let's call that method here too so df is equal to self dot load data set from scikit-learn at this point, because we have used this empty data frame, so we can use empty data frame here. We can use this data frame as a variable and at the last return empty data frame. So in good condition, when code works, we will have a filled data frame. In bad condition, we will have a data frame which is empty and we will validate wherever we want to use the data frame. So here we have created a very simple class, the get data set method where we are loading our data set move the pandas out only okay that should be enough for now so very first thing let me compile this code so this code is still going to work i'm running the code code is running because the class was never used so we can actually comment this code and use a data set directly here and we can also comment this so we can use our class now so we could this is our class data set selector so we just call it ds selector is equal to data set selector so we have created this ds selector object and we are instantiating this class now you see here that there is a this mark which shows that something is empty it needs to be filled put mouse here you will see that ds library unfilled ds name unfilled because the initializer of this class require these parameter if you define this parameter for example a and this parameter equals b it means if you do not define these parameters and if you look into the class you see that the method is not showing that emptiness because by default we have set it up some parameters which going to be default set if you will not provide the parameters in our scenario we are not setting it so we are going to put this back again it means we need to provide the library name and the data set name so let's write here the library name is sns and the data set is diamonds. So now when this class is going to be instantiated, these values will be set. And now if you would want to make a get data set call, so we will call this ds selector dot. You see there is a get data set and this return of this get data set is the data frame. So same code df equals. We can use this data set name, which is passed here. So because we are refactoring the code, our objective is to make sure that this call works and we can load the data set and we can actually bypass this whole code for now because we are implementing it. At this point, we just make sure that whatever our data frame is, we could get the data set and we can print its value. So that's all we would want to, to perform it. Let's run this code. So data frame is empty let's figure it out where is an issue so first put a breakpoint in initializer let's debug the code let's go inside here let's see the setup so now 
if we look into our DS selector, you expand it, you will get description. You see library is SNS, day's name is planets. Now we are looking into the get data set. Let's come inside here, empty data frame of DS library in DS libraries. That was the first one because the library name in the libraries. Let's put a breakpoint here because that's where the error was. We have already validated this part, so we don't really need it. So DS library, it means the SNS is part of SNS in this list. Now we are looking into this check. If that validation is good, it's good. Okay, so this DS name, which is the planets, is part of SNS get data set names list. Now we are loading the data set here. Come inside data frame. Data frame is filled with value. Value is returned. Here is the data frame and code is working. Now our objective here is to add the scikit-learn. So as you could see here that scikit-learn has these data sets. So let's only select five of them. So let's use the iris, diabetes, disease, wine and breast cancer. Easy to remember. And in order to use scikit-learn, make sure you have installed the scikit-learn library. So here I will be importing from sklearn.com datasets, import, load iris, load digits, load diabetes, load wine, load breast cancer. Let's use only five of these. Let's comment this because we are not using self.scikit learn datasets, which we are supporting because we are not supporting all iris, digits, wine, diabetes, breast cancer. So these are the five datasets we are selecting. So here load data set from scikit learn library. So here we just need to make sure we do one more check here. We can say if self.ds name in self.scikit learn data sets. If it is there, then only we are going to select the data set from scikit learn. Now, if we would want to load these data sets, we are going to call the specific method for each selected data set. It means we have to write the individual call here. If self.dsName iris, then we need to make sure the data frame is equal to load iris. If it is wine, load wine, else if digits, digits, diabetes, and last one, else if breast cancer, we can use actually this in. We can still support so all three conditions are going to be met load breast cancer so we have all five conditions are met for all five data sets so once this method is there load data set from scikit learn which is being called here here this method where we are checking ds name we need to check here if self dot ds name in if it is part of scikit-learn, it should use self.scikit-learn data sets. True. And just to match with this condition, we will add these also here. If we will run the code with iris data set and the sklearn library, if we run the code, I'm confident the code is running. And if you could see here, this is the array of data related with our iris data set. So after we have created our class data set selector here, next step, we are going to create the second class, which is the data set manager class, data set manager object in it. So this class loads the data set and this class manage the data set. So, so this class manage the data set specific function. So the job of this class to make sure whatever you would want to load, it can give the data frame to you. And in this class, we are going to process that particular data frame. It means this class is going to set up the data frame. Self dot data frame is the data frame. It means when this class is going to initialize, this class must need a data frame to start with. So this class will load data set selector and data set manager will store the data frame and process whatever you would 
want to perform any functionality on top of that particular data frame. And for now, just to connect the both data frame and the data set, so we will also pass the parameter called data set name and that parameter is actually going to be also used here to self dot data set name. So this is the data set name and the data set frame which belongs to this data set. So these two parameter will be passed. The class is defined here. Now very first method we can limit because remember when this method was being called it has a parameter called limit. It means that whenever we are going to set the data frame we want to limit the records which are coming out from this data frame. So define set data set limit. This method actually has all the capabilities. So let's take this code and bring it here. So you know what we really need to perform here. So you see there is a limit type. So this limit type is actually going to be part of here. So we can say self dot limit type and we can say if self dot limit type. So it means that limit type is going to be define whenever somebody is going to make this method call. It means we need to pass the limit type and the limit, whatever the value records limit. So records limit and limit type is going to be passed whenever this method is going to be called. If the user limit type in, and we can say if not, if limit type is not in this, we can already return the false. Else, if it is not false, it means that this check is not really needed. If limit type is top, now whatever actions we are happening here, they are going to happen on self dot data frame. So the data frame which has been set will automatically set any of these capabilities, whether you would want to get the top records out, bottom records out, or sample random samples record out, and whatever this data frame is just set that value accordingly. So here you have seen that records limit was 1000 and limit type was sample. So let's take that here, enable it. Now we are going to call DS manager data set manager. And you see here that this data set manager can only work when we are going to provide the data set name and the data frame here. Our data set name is this. So we can say data set name and the data frame is this data frame. So this is the data frame. So you call if df dot empty and if data frame is not empty only then you are going to set up this class. As you could see that this data set manager will be instantiated as a DS manager by data set name and the data frame which is here. And that's how the DS manager is going to have the data frame in its memory. So now we could say DS manager dot set limit. The limit parameters are the record limit comma limit type is sample. And let's have a 10 records first. So now if you would want to print this value, it's better that if we could print in this data set manager because that's the class which manages all these data set specific function. So we could actually create a method called define render data set values and this method is going to render this result. Let me write here and then I will convert that to. So result type, it means you need to process what way you would want to render. So this is the result type is if it is DF then print as a DF else if result type is json then print this will be self dot data frame this will be self dot data frame so this is the method which printed and the way you could print it you can call here you can say ds manager dot render data set values and here you could say i would like to print as data frame and you see here that we have removed the printing which was done as a independent code in the main it just became a method of our class one more thing we could do is that because we are not using this code so we can also remove this code we are not using a method we can take this whole code and we can come and we can put into here and our 
data set name is iris and we will use this variable here we can remove this part so now everything is in main no more most more functions so slowly slowly our objective is to remove all of this code and move everything into the class so after it let's go back to our sns data set diamonds and because we know that was working code so we use that first let's run it so we could see that diamond data set a random 10 records are printed so this code is working with 10 records next we are going to check this very quickly with the sklearn and pass the iris let's run it oh we have some error that's totally ex expected let's put a breakpoint here so the error which we have just hit is expected and i am coming there to show you where it is and how we need to fix it so this is the place where we are loading the data set from the scikit-learn and as you could see here that the place where we are loading the data set there is a trick in order to use the data sets from the scikit-learn so uh, i will put a breakpoint here and let's run here because we are loading iris so we are definitely going to come here if we look into the load iris in the debugger we can look into the type it is actually the bunch type from the sklearn this is not a pandas data frame we are expecting a pandas data frame here so in order to convert this as a pandas data frame we have to write it a little different so load iris has there is a data part you can see load iris dot data if you look into feature names here are the feature names so load iris has both data and feature names so we could create a pandas data frame by combining these two let's close it here we just call it iris equals to load iris and then data frame is equals to pandas dot data frame we need to define the data which is iris dot data and we need columns which is iris dot feature names let's debug again okay if we use this data frame and check the type of this data frame this is a data frame pandas data frame it means our result should be okay and you see here the 10 records are printed here so we have fixed that error for iris now we need to make sure that everything we could do for other data frames too so this will become the wine and last for best cancer so and just to make sure everything works we will use digits this time and make sure the code works does it work what if i say wine Code works fine. It means okay, our code is good. There is one more issue we have, and let me fix it. And that issue is related with limit and samples. And I will show you where it is. So let's see. First, we need to write a method where we can see that what is the length of our data set. And data set manager is the place where we, sh we should define that method. So we call define data set length, and here we need to return the length of self dot data frame we can also define a method called data set shape and it will also return self dot data frame dot shape before we are printing we could say ds manager dot data set length and we can actually print it here so you can say print data set length now you can also see the shape so you can say ds ds shape because the data set shape always gives the two top values of tuple first value is rows and second value is column is equals to two then you could say print shape now we will get the length as well as the rows and columns let's run this code data set length is 10 data set rows are 10 13 because we are setting the record limit let's do not set the record limit run you will see there are 178 records in this data set now what if you set for 200 records you are setting 200 records 
and now you are using the sample method let's run the code and you hit an error so this error belongs to this place and reason is that because remember we have 178 records however we are asking to sample 200 and that's the reason it means we need to make sure that if we are sampling the size of sample must be the length of data set if the sample size is greater then we need to sample without record limit so we can say if record limit is less than self dot data set length only then run the sample based on record limit else do the same sampling but let's try now you see here because of data set length this condition was false sample has been done with only one record put breakpoint here data set length is 178 record limit is 200 and you are only going to sample just a one record so that's how you can solve the problem which we have seen because of the record limit was lower than the expected sampling record request so until now our code is working the get columns we need to implement we also need to implement the get column data types so at this point we are going to stop our session we will continue the same session where we are going to add the both data filtering by value and the data filtering by category in the second part of the same video thank you so much for your time i do appreciate and i'm looking forward to seeing the second part of the same video until then thank you so much